Hello you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I feel like I've been really anticipating filming this video because today we're finally going to be talking about all things Throne of Glass. If you guys aren't new here, I actually have an Akatar series review on my channel. It's one of my most popular videos, so I will link it up here if you guys wanna go check that out. Throne of Glass is in the same universe as Akatar. Both of the series are written by Sarah J Maas. I'm sure that you guys know because she is like one of the most popular fantasy authors, I feel like, especially now with her Crescent City, Actar, and then Throne of Glass. She just has so many amazing books to read and I've absolutely enjoyed reading them. Today we're going to be focused on Throne of Glass. I'll give you guys kind of my thoughts. I'll give you a brief synopsis of what it's about, what you can expect. We'll talk about the reading orders and such. So I hope that you guys will enjoy this video. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So Throne of Glass is an eight book high fantasy book series written by Sarah J Maas. You've got the Assassin's Blade, which is kind of like the prequel to the whole storyline. Then you have Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and then Kingdom of Ash is the last book. As you guys can see, these books are pretty thick. They are definitely all bricks. The last book is like almost a thousand pages long. It took me almost seven, seven-ish months to read. It was definitely a process for me. Really proud that I was able to read this book series. I feel like that's such a big accomplishment. Very proud of myself for doing that. If you guys really enjoy fantasy books, if you like a lot of adventure, found family, strong-willed, independent female characters, magical items, creepy, magical creatures, fairies, princes, all of that kind of, you know, fantasy stuff, I think you're really going to enjoy reading Throne of Glass. So let's kind of talk about the reading order of these books. There are two different reading orders that most people do, well there is only two reading orders that you can do and they all revolve around the prequel The Assassin's Blade. The reading order that I did was an order of publication which is when you read The Assassin's Blade as the first book. If you do it the romanticy, I think that's what it's called, I'm not sure, I'll put a screenshot on the screen of what it is because I don't remember. If you do the other order, it's placing The Assassin's Blade as the third book that you read. But I think if you are just interested in the book series, kind of want to dip your toes in the world, get to to know Selena who is the main character, get to know her backstory and her history and kind of how she ends up where she is in Throne of Glass because when you start this one you see her kind of in jail and prison for something that happens in this book. I really think it's important that you read it. Just don't skip it. I had a friend that did that and I just feel like it makes the reading experience that much more enjoyable if you do read this one. Then you have Throne of Glass. This is like the first official main book in the series. Um, I'll kind of just read the back of the book so you guys can get a quick synopsis of what it's about. Again, there are eight books in this book series. So much more happens throughout the rest of the series than like what's covered in this book. It says, in a land without magic, an assassin is summoned to the castle. She has no love for the vicious king who rules from his throne of glass, but she has not come to kill him. She has come to win her freedom. If she defeats 23 murderers, thieves, and warriors in a competition, she will be released from prison to serve as the king's champion. Her name is Selena Sardothian. The crown prince will provoke her. The captain of the guard will protect her and a princess from a faraway country will befriend her. But something rotten dwells in the castle and it's there to kill. When her competitors start dying mysteriously one by one, Selena's fight for freedom becomes a fight for survival and a desperate quest to root out the evil before it destroys her world. I'm trying to keep the spoiler free so that's all I'm going to say about it. Selena is a very strong-willed female character. If you like reading about those types of people, I think you will really, really enjoy. She's definitely one of my favorites, but in this one you kind of get to see the start of the plot. You get to know a couple more of the the characters. So Dorian is the crown prince and Kale is the captain of the guard. You get to know them a little bit better. This book I think is entirely in Selena's point of view. And then you get to Crown of Midnight. I really enjoyed reading this book. I know it's not a lot of people's favorites, but this is where a lot of, you know, maybe it's, you form some questions reading Throne of Glass. I feel like this one is really where the plot begins to start and some of those questions get answered and you just kind of become very curious about like what's going on and what's going to happen. So that that is Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, then whether or not you want to read The Assassin's Blade, you'd read that after or before. Then you get to Air of Fire. This is, if I'm counting The Assassin's Blade, this is the fourth book. And this is kind of where things start to pick up. You get introduced to a lot more characters. So Selena starts out 
in a new place, she meets a lot of new people, and you'll get to know some characters that are going to be very, very important for the rest of the series. These are, you know, main characters that are going to be important to the plot and the story. You get to see Selena go through so much character development in this book, not so much like happens in regards to the plot, which made me not love it as much, but I think definitely there's a lot of important details and important things that happen in here that you need to read to continue on with the rest of the series. It wasn't one of my favorites. This is a very, very popular one just because of the main guy character that gets introduced in this one. You get a lot more of the fairies and stuff in Air of Fire. Moving to the next one, Queen of Shadows. This was my absolute favorite book out of the entire series. This was my first five-star read in the series. I only had two as I was reading through it. It was this one and then Empire of Storms. This one is very fast-paced. They're in the thick of the plot. A lot of the other characters kind of come together and you get to see them work together and they're really just doing what they need to do. You get to go see them go on quest and the adventure really, really starts to pick up and I really liked that about this one. Then you move into Empire of Storms and I will also mention Tower of Dawn because you can do a tandem read with both of these and that is the way I did it. That is the way I would recommend that you do it just because so much happens. <laughs> so much happens. This is like the sixth and the seventh book. Empire of Storms is very, very fast paced. These books take place at the same exact time. They're just told from different point of view. So you get a couple of the characters, very fast paced, doing the thing, having the adventure, um, a lot, a lot happens in this book. And by the time you finish it, you're going to be devastated by how it ends, which is why I really, really encourage you guys to do the tandem because I feel like if I read them separately, I would not have wanted to read a book that happened at the exact same time in a different place from someone else's point of view because you don't get to see and read about what happens next. That would have driven me nuts. If you guys read these as they were coming out, I really applaud you because I don't think I would have done that which is why I highly recommend doing the tandem read. I would not have enjoyed Tower of Dawn as much as I did if I read them separately. You can Google like a guide to the tandem. It'll tell you like what chapters you're supposed to read and it flip flops kind of back and forth between the two. I think it's so, so worth it. It'll take you a while. It was very intimidating. It took me like over a month to do it, but it was so worth it and so rewarding once I actually finished it. Then we jump into the last book, which is Kingdom of Ash. This is the eighth book where, you know, everything starts to come together. It is a thousand pages long and I remember I, remember I was so intimidated going into it. I kind of like put off reading it just because I knew it was going to take me forever to get through. But also it's the last one. And by the time you get to this point, I feel like you're so attached to the characters. You love them. There's so much found family in these books, which is really great. Kind of like how it is in Akatar as well. And you get to see everything come together and it's just very, very detailed. This book drags a little bit just because of how much action there is and how much politics that there is. There are certain point of views like I didn't really care to read, but then there were others where I was like dying to get their point of view and be inside of their head. And I really like that about these books is you get a lot of people's point of views. It can be overwhelming at times just because there's so many characters to keep track of. Kind of like if you think about Game of Thrones where there's like just, there's so many different characters and they all have like their little own plots and storylines and stuff. It can get really overwhelming. That's how it is in this book series. But I think if you get through it, it's going to be so worth it. And it's really going to impact you and change your life and be such a good reading experience. I really like the way that this ended. I think the writing is beautiful. Definitely a lot of really good quotes and mantras in this book series. I like how everything came together at the end and getting to see the happy ending. If that's something you're worried about, there is a happy ending at the end. It just takes you a minute to get there. I just feel like the way that she writes everything in the plot, like something I've learned about reading all of the Sarah J Mass books is that every single little detail matters. Like she does everything with a purpose. You have to pay attention to everything. And just the way that she connects all of the dots, it will just like blow blow your mind. I remember finishing Empire of Storms and I was just like in a fetal position on my bed because I was so overwhelmed. I was like, what did I just read? I've got all my books back now, but I did want to talk about kind of my expectations going into the series and also mention the spice because again, not trying to compare it to Akatar. If you guys have read that book series, it definitely is a lot more spicier. There's a lot more sex scenes and like X-rated content in those books. For Throne of Glass, I feel like it's really mild. Like there's not as much of that. You get some of it like towards the end, I think when you reach like Empire of Storms. But again, the romance isn't like a main part of the plot. Like I would say it is in Akatar. Akatar is very romance heavy, which is why I would say it's more like a romanticy, but this is more of like a high fantasy. The romance is there and it is epic and very enjoyable, but all of these characters are very independent and very focused on the plot and like what's happening, what needs to be done. It kind of reminds me of the Red Queen series. If you've read that, it's very, very heavy on the politics. But I think if you're in high school reading these, 
that would be totally fine. Again, in Akatar, I would say more of like maybe a college level of reading just because of the spice content that's in those books. My expectations kind of going into this, I feel like I had high expectations coming off of reading Akatar. That's a five star book series for me. Obviously, I only had two five star books reading this, so it was not like that for me in my personal reading experience. It was still enjoyable and I did really enjoy reading the books. It took me a lot longer and I did fall into a couple slumps along the way, but I'm definitely happy that I was able to get through it and finish it. I feel like there's so much hype around this book series and I think it is worth it for the found family aspect and the plot, but I don't think I would go into it thinking it's going to be like Akatar because it's not. When Sarah first started writing this book series, I believe she was a teenager. So as you get through the book series, I feel like you could see her writing mature and get a lot better like it is in Akatar. I think if you kind of push through, I know sometimes for certain people it's like, I don't want to get invest in a book series if it's going to take me three to four books to really get into it but I promise if you stick with it I think you would really enjoy it and it's just it's definitely worth the read that's kind of my thoughts on Throne of Glass and I'm sure I missed a few things here or there but I hope that review was helpful for you guys if you're interested in reading it or maybe you've already read it and you just wanted to know what my thoughts were. If you have read the book series definitely leave me a comment down below letting me know what your thoughts were. Let me know what your favorite book was. Again I said mine was definitely Queen of Shadows. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have made it this far I hope that you guys are having a great day wherever you are and I will catch you guys in my next